So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G initial review. Now let's begin by talking about the price, $17.99. However, you're not likely gonna pay that price as Samsung runs trade-in incentives. Right now, you're gonna get the best ones, especially if you trade in the Z Fold 2, if you have one of those devices, that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm getting over a grand off the price of this phone. If you are trading other premium devices, you will get big prices off as well, but you can also trade in multiple devices. I'm trading in three on this phone. I got it for around $500, so pretty cheap device here with the trade-ins, but if you buy it outright, it's gonna cost you a hefty sum. Now, in terms of the box, before we head on to some other stuff with this phone, it, it got a lot thinner right here. There's no charger in the box. It's just a simple box that says Z on the front, Galaxy Fold 3 on the left, Galaxy Z Fold 3 on the bottom. Their presentation is not quite as good as it was on the original Z Fold or even the Z Fold 2. We do have now a 120 hertz smooth, fast display on the front. On the front, it's also Gorilla Glass Victus. Gorilla Glass Victus on the rear. Phantom Black right here. They have Phantom Green, Phantom Silver. It's really giving me these S21 Plus vibes right here. Take a look at those cameras. They're basically the same. We're bringing back the traffic light camera right there. That's the first thing I thought about when I seen the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was, okay, we have the S21 Fold because basically it's giving me those vibes right off the bat. It's giving you similar features. It's giving you a similar feel on the, even the back texture feels like it's the same material as the S21 Ultra, S21 Plus device right there. Now, opening this thing up, you have yourself a beautiful 7.6 inch display, but that doesn't change from the Galaxy Z Fold, but in one area, it absolutely does. And that's gonna be in terms of the punch hole camera. You can see there is no punch hole camera up there but you can kind of still see where it is. If you look closely, there is like these little pixels and you can kind of see it, but it does a good job at tricking your brain into not really looking at it. Whereas with the Z Fold 2, there was this little black hole at the top of the display and you would see it. And not only that, if you take a look at the original Galaxy Z Fold had this huge notch up at the top right here. So it's definitely, Nowhere near that. They definitely made improvements to display, especially over something like the original Galaxy Fold right there. Take a look at that right there. So that's definitely something you're gonna notice right away. They're getting closer to that all screen feel. In addition to that, Samsung has brought over the Galaxy Notes S Pen experience. It's more like the S21 Ultra's experience though. It's not going inside of the body anything like that. And it does say Fold Edition on this pen right here. Let's see if we can get that into focus. Fold Edition right there. So you have to use this Fold Edition pen, but I can tell you right now, it's super smooth, been using it all night right here. It's got all the main features you would want. Not every single feature from the Note line, but it's got most of the stuff that you would want. And it's making me not really miss the Note too much right now, even though I really wanted them to launch one. I wrote a whole note right here just to kind of show you how wide of a screen you have on here to jot down notes and stuff like that. So this can be very productive. And if you want to draw, of course, you have a larger canvas now to go ahead and do that drawing. So if you want to draw a smiley face or whatever, you got plenty of space now. In addition to that, I will say though, that you do have to put it in this case. And this is not a bad looking case, but it does kind of stick off the end of the phone if you decide to use the S Pen. But if you don't decide to use the S Pen, I feel like you shouldn't even get this phone because that's really the main thing that is super improved here is you have S Pen capability. But at the same time that everybody uses it, I still think the Z Fold 2 is basically most of what this phone is without that S Pen. So let me discuss my initial thoughts on the design. You know, it feels thick, just like the Z Fold 2, but it feels lighter than that phone, and that's good. At least we went down 11 grams. It feels a little bit more compact. Not gonna say it's as compact as I would like it to be, but still, Definitely co more compact than the Galaxy Z Fold 2, which is a good thing. It got a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to carry around. It feels like the Z Fold 2 just kind of got upgraded to an S21 and got a little bit lighter. So discussing my initial review on the software, my favorite thing about the Z Fold 2 right here is kind of like this whole tablet-like setup right here. It gives you this split pane view, multi-view. It's very nice. And then over here, if you are doing multitasking, you have so many apps you can split between on this phone. I talked about this in my Z Fold 2 long-term review, but you can also flip between them like so. You can also 
also put a third application inside there as well. So you got quite a bit of multitasking you can do. You can even save these pairs right here. So if I tap on this guy right here, you can save those pairs. You can save triple pairs down there. So definitely super productive when it comes to multitasking. Okay, and the next thing I like about this phone, again, is the S Pen with the software, because this is why I say you should probably get this S Pen if you're getting this phone, because you're missing out on a whole suite of software if you don't. And not only that, if we go to advanced features, you'll see Samsung only always hooks it up with all these advanced features right here, including one of my favorite, the one-handed mode right here, because sometimes the screen's just too big to use one hand. And maybe you might wanna use that feature right there, but just so much going on. There's also the secure folder for more privacy and security. We have, you know, built in protection when it comes to right here, you have McAfee built into this turn on the spyware. I should probably do that right now. You could scan the phone, you could check your battery. And by the way, this is the 512 gig. One thing I didn't like is that it used like 50 gigs for the system right out the box. So you're not really getting 512, you're getting more like 560 somewhere around there so you definitely going to use 50 gigs right out the box for the system base of storage so that kind of sucked but still at the same time it's a lot more storage than 256 gig and i got it at the same price as 256 gig and of course the rest of it is still samsung you have your theming options you have one ui 3.1.1 over here there's this nice cool new feature where you can kind of set a timer and then it goes to like a little mini timer over here so that's kind of cool if you're kind of looking at a recipe but you're also doing a time timer right there so there's a lot going on with this phone it's it's samsung through and through you know you're going to get all these extra Extra features up here as well. You can scan QR codes right from up there. You got a, you have Dex built in as well. You can plug this into a computer, make it even bigger computer. So, you know, it's loaded. It's like everything you would want in a smartphone to be like your little pocket computer, more so than a regular smartphone. So am I missing the Samsung Galaxy Note series that it didn't come back this year and they decided to do this instead? Not a lot, but if you like the slab style smartphone and you like the pen inside of the body, it's still not a note. So if you really want a note device because the pen goes right in the body on the note and that makes it much more convenient. And when it comes to performance, this phone does have the Snapdragon 888 CPU on board that is clocked in at 2.84 gigahertz. That's basically what you have on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, Adreno 660, Let's just put it this way, with 12 gigs of RAM and that boss CPU and super fast storage, yeah, there's no lag whatsoever. This thing flies through basically anything you can throw at it. You're never gonna run into lag on the Galaxy Z Fold, and you better not, for $17.99, I better not run into no lag. This is a $17.99 phone, Samsung, so thank you for hooking it up with the performance it deserves. And it basically has no problems running anything you can throw at it. Gaming's pretty awesome as well on such a large 7.6 inch. And you can see that that punch hole kind of just disappears. Those pixels kind of match what you're playing and stuff and it kind of goes away and then it feels like your eyes not even looking at it. So yeah, crazy good performance, but on the inner display, I don't really notice a big difference from the Z Fold 2 and that's not a bad thing because that thing flew as well in terms of overall performance. My first thoughts on the battery life are it's darn good. This phone makes it through a full day with pretty good usage. Now I will say that it does go down by 100 milliamp, but with the Snapdragon 888, that's not really gonna change the battery life over the Z Fold 2. The Z Fold 2 has a Snapdragon 865 Plus. This phone, better CPU, more efficient, only goes down 100 milliamp, and it went down a little bit to make the phone a little bit lighter. So let me talk about the cameras right here for this device. Now, I gotta tell you right now, this under display camera, it's trash. Four megapixel camera, I don't even know why it's there. I, I really, I don't even need it. To be honest, Samsung, I don't even need that camera right there. I'd rather use the one on the front that's 10 megapixels. I don't mind closing it to take this camera or this photo right here, but I get it. You know, we get, some people are doing conference calls on this big screen, so they need some type of camera on there. But this, this is ridiculous. Like this is like a downgrade from this one, 10 megapixels versus four megapixels. And because it's under display, it looks a little bit fuzzy. So. Not a fan of this inner display camera, it's trash. Now on the back, I will say though, that these cameras are quite good. They are very similar. They actually come in at the same spec as the Z Fold 2, but the results seem to be a little bit sharper for some reason. Maybe it's a processing or something, but it does have that 12 megapixel triple setup on the rear. And in addition to that, let me go ahead and flip it around. You do have director's view and some things that you did get from the Galaxy S21 line, 
But, you know, this this phone is not going to be the best camera phone in Samsung's lineup. That's not what they're trying to go after here. But it's still the best camera you're going to get on foldable phones. And that's not a bad thing. It can still go 10x. They didn't increase the zoom or anything like that. But I got to say, pretty cool overall camera experience when you're using this big display on the inner display. I would just stick to the main cameras and the front camera on the front screen. Those are the ones that are the best here. And they're pretty much on par with the Z Fold 2. So... There's not much to say about them. 10 megapixel on the front, triple 12 on the back, ultra wide. They do a pretty good job, but they're not overly impressive. They're not gonna be your best camera phone out there. That's not what you buy this phone for. So there's a speaker down here at the bottom, and then there's a speaker up here at the top right there. And you can see pretty loud. It's also crispy. Like it doesn't sound cheap or anything like that. You know how some Samsung phones, they sound a little bit tinny. This one sounds pretty darn crispy in quality as well. Now, when it comes to the phone call quality, it's pretty darn good. We have Qualcomm modems in here. It's 5G performance with the connectivity. It held signal strength just fine. I was able to talk just fine. So with Samsung phone, it's pretty good there as well. And then discussing the initial thoughts on the colors, you have phantom black here, you have silver. I didn't pick up the silver and you got the phantom green. I was gonna go with the green, but you couldn't get it in the 512 gig when I pre-ordered. So I went with the black. I think it's the most businessy, classy looking color. And it's pretty darn good. I would say pick up the color you enjoy the most, but if you want the high storage, you might have to go with the Phantom Black. So what are my initial thoughts on this phone overall? Personally, as a Fold 2 user, this is not a super exciting upgrade over this device. It feels incremental. It feels like they are making it a bit better, but they didn't do nothing extraordinary. It doesn't give me the same feels as when I first opened up the Galaxy Fold because this was like a groundbreaking device for me. Now, you're, if you have never used a foldable phone and this is going to be your first one, good for you because they are so much more refined now than the original Fold. And if you've never opened a Fold phone, this is gonna be extraordinary to you as well. But I would define this as a natural progression in the evolution of smartphone foldables, especially the Z Fold line. And it's pretty much almost perfect for most people. And for some people, it probably already is perfect. But one area Samsung knows they can improve is these cameras. They don't have to put, you know, weaker cameras in the S21 Ultra on here. They could put a big professional camera on here if they wanted to. And, you know, for $17.99, why not? I don't want to have to go switch to my Ultra or switch to another phone when I want to use the best camera on a phone when I'm paying $17.99. Put a premium top dog camera on the next fold. In addition, there are some other areas they can improve. This is a nitpick, it's not really a big deal, but the inner display is not nearly as sharp as something like a Galaxy Note, which gets over 500 pixels per inch, or the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which also gets over 500 pixels per inch. This is at 374. But other than that, we have basically the perfect folding smartphone right here for at least, you know, this current iteration of foldable, you know, the Z Fold line, they're almost, they're almost have a perfect phone here. The front display could get a little bit sharper and more vibrant as well. That's not quite as vibrant as the inner display, but there's not much more to say about it. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me and let me know your thoughts on the Galaxy Z Fold. I will catch you all in the very next episode. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.